Good morning and good evening everyone and welcome to our first podcast. My name is Rudy and I have two other hosts with me today, Matthew and Christian. Matthew, you want to introduce yourself please? Yeah, uh, hi guys, my name is Matthew. Uh, I am the marketing team leader in Bush Road uh, International. Uh, I oversee quite a lot of different things. I oversee marketing for each of the different brands. I oversee the video uh, production as well. Um, as a tournament yeah christian and um my name is christian uh i'm sure some of you guys have seen me at the tournament events for our regionals um i am the team leader for the tournament event team um my main job is essentially uh event coordination setting things up uh so you guys can have these you know big events um making sure everything's going well uh it's it's essentially just you know plotting and planning the tournaments and listening to the community and seeing where we want to go and uh grow with us Cool. As for me, I'm the Director of Sales and Development. I plan the release schedules, any sales campaigns, development for the products, etc. I cover quite a wide base of things. I travel quite a lot for the events as well, so I work very closely with Matt and Christian. Do you though? <laughs> Alright, so as you guys know, we are having these podcasts for the Summerfest. So let's dive a little deeper into what Summerfest is about, Christian. Okay, so uh, Summerfest is essentially a month-long event where we have tournaments, we have uh, contests, prizes, uh, online content, things for everybody to do and enjoy while, you know, we're either like, safe at home and or, you know, just um, on the go, you know, just trying to figure out what you guys want to do for the summer. So we're bringing this to you guys, uh, Summerfest. And uh, moving in, like, just to describe a little bit about... Um, Tournament wise, uh, we're actually doing a Vanguard Zero tournament hosted by Pro Play Games. Uh, they will be doing the the bulk of the invitationals, and they will be hosting uh, the Vanguard Zero tournaments there. But with those invitationals, that then goes into the end of the month, where we will be having a championship tournament. Uh, this championship tournament will be only invited to invitational for sixty four players. Um, on our side, we will be actually picking the top twelve players in vanguard zero for the ranked season of the first through the 15th and we also have like a fun little invitational going on with our community leaders and some of the influencers that uh play vanguard zero so we'll also be giving some invites there as well you guys can go ahead and enjoy the those matches uh going on through Summerfest. um we have so much going on like i can honestly talk go on and on and on about it uh but just make sure to look at our website for any updates what's going on make sure to follow us on facebook you know we're gonna have uh, the page up soon so you know uh just go ahead and just look us up and see what's going on awesome so we'll also be having these podcasts as part of summerfest we'll be having uh, five episodes i believe yep. we also have other of our uh, colleagues with us to talk about the development processes for by Schwartz for uh, Vanguard and some to talk about the mobile games that we have. And on top of that, I think for the final episode, we have a very special guest who is one of the key community leaders for Vanguard. He's been playing a lot of Vanguard and Vanguard Zero recently. His name is Chris. He's from Different Fight. Yeah, you guys might have heard of him. Yeah, Yeah. you guys might have heard of him. (laughs) (laughs) He also hosts, uh, or rather he's the commentator for our World Finals for Vega for the past like two years, three years, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we're very happy to have him on to talk about how he got into Vega, how he jumped into becoming a YouTuber and doing stuff for Vega, and how he became a commentator and things like that. I'm actually really stoked about that because I've never had a like one on one or any type of like like we've said hi and stuff and you know like we've met at uh, World Finals, but I've never really like had like a a full, you know, back and forth, like, you know, conversation, just casual something to get to know the guy. So he seems like a cool guy, honestly, like, you know, from his content to World Finals and just, he just seems like a, a cool guy. So I'm I'm actually excited to, you know, get together and talk with him. Yeah. So I, I was actually um, on the stream with him, on the world's live stream with him. And he's actually a joy to work with. He's, he's very professional, very nice guy. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, that, that, that's the kind of vibe that he gives off to, to most people. And I think that's why a lot of people listen to his content as well. I mean, I, that's why I do. You know, yeah. I, yeah exactly. I, like, I, I like to listen. I was like, I, I have to like the people to listen to him. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good vibe only. 
<laughs> unless I like listen to like you know just troll posting and stuff like that. I mean that's sometimes that's funny, but I mean that's really it. That's really it. So we hope everybody has been doing well on this during this uh, COVID nineteen crisis. It's been a crazy time. I think this would be the first pandemic that we've been through for our generation, considering that you know. I believe SARS wasn't this big previously. Mm, uh, not, yeah. not that it wasn't a big deal, but it we, was, didn't, yeah. we didn't feel the impact because we were very young. Uh, how's it been working from home or how have you guys been coping during this time? Oh, me? Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just go first. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> my, my mouth already opened, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so for me, um, coping with it is... Um, like I, I said before, like remote fight, like I'm sure some of you guys out there know, um, I've been doing a lot of remote fight, not just for work, but um, sometimes I'll just, you know, do casual play um, just like off on my like own account. Um, that's been really fun for me just to kind of like, you know, just interact with the, the community and just play games. Some of them like know specifically who I am and like some of them are just like, it's like, oh, cool. It's nice playing you, man. Like I never like mention anything. Um, but for me, it's essentially just kind of been like uh, working on artwork. Uh, I, I like to collect like figures and different stuff like that. So I collect and I like, I post figures on like Instagram and stuff and artwork. And I mean, mainly just kind of like at, you know, at home life and just, you know, taking it day by day. So we can do a shout out to Christian's personal Instagram profile. Right now. It's <laughs> Karen Beardy. Super. He posts a lot of his artwork and stuff like that. You can check it out. Yeah, do check it out. It's, he's got a couple of photos right now. He's doing, he's doing his like artwork and stuff. It's, it's really pretty good. So yeah, if you guys have the time, please. <laughs> Please do take a look. Follow, Shame like, and subscribe. <laughs> Dude, I don't, I don't know if what you guys... What about you? Uh, uh, I'll say again. I'll say, I don't know if you guys saw, but man, like, the last figure I've just posted, I was actually really stoked about it. So, <laughs> I just wanted to go through with that real quick. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think I did see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it One Piece? Yeah, it was Whitebeard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice, nice. What about you, Matt? What have you been up to? Um, How do you stay sane during this work from home? Cannot go out. Honestly, I've just been playing a lot of games when I'm not working, just to you know, um, suppress the pain. <laughs> 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 I, can, yeah, I, I kind of because I mean, card gamers, you I, I think you guys can understand this because a lot of card shops are not open right now. Like your local game stores are not open right now, so it's difficult to get out and play cards, right? So even though we, have, I mean, definitely we we're trying very hard with BRF, and I think. It's been seeing some progress. I think a lot of people are at least getting to connect and then play with like physical cards and stuff like that if they don't want to play Vanguard Zero. Yeah. But the essential thing about like card gaming is like face to face, right? Like right. you get to play against your opponent, you get to look at them and then you know you get to greet them, talk to them, yeah. and then after the game you get to you know share insights about the game, laugh about it, talk about it, things like that. And then you know, there's also the aspect of like playing a card game where being face to face with your opponent, you can, you know, like Play like mind games and like that. There's like little <laughs> things you can do, but all these things don't really come through in BRF. So for me, as a card gamer, as an avid, uh, uh, sorry, as, as a as a like avid card gamer, that's that's been really really painful. I think, but I've been trying to like you know stay home, like brew decks and stuff like that, uh, in between playing my games and in between work. So that's that's been helping me you know cope with everything. I think. So what games do you play? You mentioned you play games at home. Oh my gosh. Um. So you, you guys have a Switch, I've been playing um, Animal Crossing. Oh man. It's, surprisingly, it's, it's it kind, actually kind of therapeutic, you know, like, you wouldn't expect a game like that to be really fun, but I've been addicted and uh, my girlfriend's into it as well, so we've been like going to each other's islands and trading stuff, uh, you know, just running around. That's, that's basically date night, right? I, like, we can't go on dates now, so that's date night. We just go to each other's islands and just run around the island, like hit each other with the, 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 the bug nets and stuff like that, and then that's that's date night, I guess. That is sweet. That is, <laughs> that, is the new that is adorable. Like I love that so much. <laughs> Thank you. That is the new modern date night. The work from home COVID nineteen date night. More or less. <laughs> I I might have really, to get Animal yep. Crossing. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Uh, uh then you'd be third really meeting on Max date nights, dude. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see what's going on. You know, like I want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hit each other with bug nets and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Rudy? What have you, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? Oh, uh, I, I jumped back into World of Warcraft. Oof. Yes. Yeah. So when I was probably about when I was younger, about ten years ago, World of Warcraft was a huge part of my life, and 
it was so huge it took away a lot of my life <laughs> and I decided to stop so that I could have a social life but since this work from home period started I jumped back into World of Warcraft uh, been playing a lot of the battle for Azeroth content also been playing a lot of Dota mm. the battle pass came out I'm sure Matt you know as well I yeah. see you online quite a fair bit so yeah I've been playing so many computer games at home that I actually have to wear a wrist guard on my right hand because I've been playing too many games <laughs> I don't stop unless I'm working I'm not on Dota but, Saturday but, and Sunday I'm practically on it for about like 5-6 hours and then after that I'm on World of Warcraft for another 5-6 hours dude Ooh. get one of those like rubber strips for your like your, your hands like your wrist man like just get yeah I know but the funny thing was I played so many games and then I didn't realize my wrist was was hurting until I tried to twist open a bottle and I was like, oh, oh man, <laughs> where did that sharp pain come from? <laughs> my stand hurt. <laughs> so I guess only Christian has like a non-video gaming hobby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Creative whoa. lifestyle I, than us. <laughs> I, like, I play video games. I just was like, you know, at this time, I, I haven't bought PlayStation Plus. I'm about to actually jump back on Monster Hunter soon. But like, I just... Oh, I don't know, no. like, I've been focusing, nice. so, I've been focusing so hard on, like, just, you know, just kind of, like, doing, like, a lot of different things that I haven't really been playing video games that much. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, like, Monster Hunter is, like, you know, me, me and my friends have been just, like, talking about it so much. Um, like, I've been, like, posting and, like, my friends t- started telling me about the lore, so I've just been kind of, like, watching, like, uh, YouTube, like, Monster Hunter lore and, like, like all this different stuff, so it's, like, okay, I think I need to get back on it, like. <laughs> Wait. There's there's law for Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. I played a lot of Monster Hunter World. I don't I don't remember any law. Wasn't yeah. it just like run around, kill big things and there <laughs> is lore. <laughs> there is actual lore to Monster Hunter. Like I I will link you guys and you yeah. will you will enjoy it. like I it's the most calming like the guy's voice is so calming. And then like he starts <laughs> explaining like everything about like he, he did like research and did all this like 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 canon lore of like what's going on. And I was like, dude, like this is amazing. So I've just been like following that, but it's a uh, it's it, it, he's he's so calming so it's just like okay like I, I get all this information and i might fall asleep but that's cool man like it's like a nature documentary <laughs> so okay. as you guys can probably tell christian is very into law so if you think about it brf bushy road remote fight also has law for the quest layers guess who wrote that <laughs> who, who this guy right here christian, christian wrote it. <laughs> they all can't see you point <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, right. That's, that's, that's true. He's like right here. They're like who? <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. Like you said, I'm super about lore. So, like for remote fight, I was like, you know what? I I really want to add something like a, a lore and like story. So, like for all you guys who are playing remote fight, you know, thank you for um you know sticking with us through the community. Like you know, I I actually really like. I was super stoked when I saw the feedback on the on the lore. Um, Mm -hmm. made me really like proud of something like that. And so like, I I do plan on actually adding more, um, you know, so guys stay tuned. Like we do plan on actually, you know, we want to continue and kind of like, you know, flesh this out into something that, you know, you guys can be a part of, uh, the lore itself, you know, like make a whole world of of everything. Cause I, I'm, I'm super about that. (laughs) That's good, man. We are, we are very happy that you wrote it. Man, I spent quite a bit of time also writing about lore a long time ago. Oh, it's... For Ascendants of Aetheros, for Dragonborn. Yeah. Things like that. And we wish that you were with us at that point of time. You could have given us a lot of tips or you could have helped us out. Man, you didn't a ask lot me. Of that <laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you guys didn't ask. <laughs> we were so tunnel vision at that point of time. Every yeah. day, day in, day out, we were grinding on like, how do we get the project on time, released on time? I mean, we just, didn't even think about getting help from outside. We're just like, you do this, you do that, I do this, I do that, okay? And that's it. Let's go, let's go, let's I, go, let's go. You know what? That's fair, though. Like, just, but yeah, no, for the future, just let me know. Like, if there's any other projects or whatever, like, I, I, yeah. I like doing it. I, I was like, and I, I loved I loved the lore for Dragonborn, so. <laughs> and I think, oh, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. And I think right now, like, we have a lot of uh, some internal stuff here. We're going to talk about some internal stuff. Uh, we we do a lot of meetings with between the officers. So Christians in the US office, where Matt and I are in the Singapore office, we are hosting this podcast right now. Of course, through a through a third party platform. Um, Matt and I plus our sound engineer Julius, which we are very lucky to have as well. We are in the office 
in a room with our masks on. Hopefully, we don't sound so muffled. Shout out to uh, Julius, man. I love him. Shout out to Julius. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Julius. Uh, and Christians in US. So we now that we have a lot more collaborations going on, I think it's great that we can uh, get more involved in each other's product, projects. So in future, Christian, you're going to be known as the law guy. Yeah, that's I, I want that. Like, please. <laughs> but you you know you can't it's like one of those things where it's like you can't give yourself a nickname when you're in like a group you know you can't be like well i want my name to be like skull crusher or something like that's like no nah, man they're gonna call you <laughs> tiny at that point like you, you you can't choose so it's like so i have to let like the community like choose like if they're just like nah we don't want him to be we want him to be you know i don't know uh hank hill or something i don't that know that tournament like, guy <laughs> I was like, that event guy that event guy like i'm i'm currently that so <laughs> I do want to be lore guy, so that sounds fun. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, Matt and I, for a period of time, we had the community gave us the nickname the YouTube guys oh. because we did. What did we do? We did. Um, it's like an old series. Of we did Mushin Navi. Yeah. We did the tutorials for Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, we did. Uh, we did the tutorials for Ascendance. No, we did Ascendance the tutorials for Ascendance. You yeah. did the tutorials for Dragon Ball. Sorry. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been I've been on far too many Ushiro videos so far. Yeah. So <laughs> we go, we travel overseas, and we have events. We be in tournaments, and people will go up, come up to us, and like, "Hey, you're that YouTube guy, right?" And we're like, "I guess so." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on which video you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually did have an experience where I was in, um, I think, New Zealand. Then uh, this is when like Etheros just came out like a couple of a couple of uh, couple of weeks or months, and then there was this group of four guys playing uh, during one of the regionals. So like they were done with the regionals, and then they were playing Etheros. So I was just, like, I just I was just like standing in the corner, I was watching them. Then they were like, one guy just looked at me. He's like, "You're, you're the guy in the the Etheros videos, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> hey, you're that guy, right? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it is cool to get like to, to, for people to recognize you and stuff like that. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. Wouldn't say, wouldn't say it's you know, our, like our one shot at like mini yeah. celebrity <laughs> stardom. Dude, I'm conceited, man. Oh my man. god, somebody recognized me! Like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm conceited, man. Like, I'll sit up there and they'll be like, "Hey, you're that one guy, right?" Like, yeah, you want to get an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm, not I'm really not. Like I, I was like, dude, my first event, like that, ha something similar happened, and I was just like, what? Like why? <laughs> so, yeah. Somebody came up to you and asked for an autograph. Yeah, dude, it was super. <laughs> it was like uncomfortable, but it was so dope. Like it was just, I thought it was super cool about like they, like they legit came up and they're like, can I get an autograph? You're from Bushy Road, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, but I felt like really awkward. And I was like, uh, I, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> No, yeah, so I think, I think like, a lot of players have this conception, like, you know, like, it's just cool to, to be able to meet, like, a Bushy Road star. Mm -hmm. But for us, we're, like, we're, like, everyday guys, right? Like, so when people come to us, say, hey, can I get an autograph? You're a Bushy Road star, right? Then, you know, it, we're just, like, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. but, like, I'm not, like, some big I think, name, though. Oh, that being said, you know, like, having been asked for autographs as well, at the end of the day, you go home, you still feel... I think it's rewarding. I think I feel appreciated yeah. for the work that I do. Yeah, for sure. The work yeah. that yeah. we bring to the players that, mm. that when they see us, they want to talk to us, they want to ask us questions, they ask for autographs. So I think sh big shout out to all the players out there. You know, we really appreciate you and we'd like to thank you for keeping our card games alive and you know enjoying the stuff that we bring to you, especially, especially the guys this who... podcast will be one of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> especially the guys who, who've asked us for autographs. Like, yeah, especially. Yeah, we really yes. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for making me feel bigger than I am. <laughs> the first person, the first person who walked up to me, shout out to you, shout out to Chile, Chile regionals. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time. <laughs> that dude, yeah, yeah. I think. Okay, on 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 that note, um, we did announce some sad news last week on monday singapore time about the cancellation oh sorry friday friday yeah uh, about the cancellation of bcs doing because of the covid 19. yeah i was going to jump into this after we talk about events but i guess we should talk about it first um we did announce a new tournament those so at least players have something to look forward to mm -hmm. we didn't want to shut down completely because we know that or rather we hope that shops will continue to open the situation will improve 
So we came up with something smaller called the Bushiroad Shop League. Matt, you want to explain a little bit about what that is? Sure. Uh, so Bushiroad Shop League is supposed to be a shop-based tournament. So because we were thinking of how can we hold events but still be able to you know meet like safety standards right. throughout the world and things like that. So we don't want too many people crowding into an event area like sometimes we have up to like 500 people in one hall and that's not great because you know right now that could lead to like another outbreak so we don't want to do that so that's why we're focusing more on the shops our shops also have been suffering during this period because you know they haven't been able to get people into play like i talked like i talked about earlier so essentially what the shop league is is uh, it's going to run from september to december and then each uh season will be two months long so what's what's going to happen is basically you participate in a shop league tournament you accumulate points for attendance and for wins and then at the end of the season you get uh the play, the person with the highest points gets like a special payout so every time you participate you get a promo and then the guy who wins the the league at the end of the, the season will get something extra so this is going to run for two different seasons so that means that you know there can be two different winners per shop your attendance will be locked behind each shop so you please do make sure to go back to the same shop to play for these leagues I mean, you could play at many shops. Oh, Just yeah, remember that your sure. points can't carry on to hmm. another shop. So we hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, we're sorry that we can't hold BCS. So because there's no BCS, I think there won't be any World Finals this year, uh, next year in 2021 either. Hmm. But we hope to resume everything back to normal with BSF 2021. Of course, we can't promise anything now. Once we observe the situation, it gets better. We'll definitely want to go back to normal with our team fights. Uh, I, I just want to, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah I just kind of wanted to explain like, um, you know, event coordination and just like tournament setup, um, you know, with, sure. with like BCS and like with BSF going, like, you know, um, you know, we plan these events like months and months in advance, like, you know, getting venues, um, you know, talking with people for setup, you know, uh, just like promo, like getting the promos for you guys, like, you know, seeing what's going on in the community. Uh, a lot of the stages to do what we do it, it's a lot of planning and so the thing is like you know when it when it comes to something like this where we are trying to you know we're trying to see that there's a safety of the players before everything it's yeah it's it's really unfortunate and i i love going to each event and being able to see everybody's right. smiling faces and you know just enjoy you know the tournaments and just the camaraderie of you know each event like there's a really good vibe and good spirit um but i hope everybody understands that you know, we when we plan these things, we do it so far ahead to make sure that everything's okay and everything's good for everybody and that it works out for everyone that, you know, it's sometimes we have to make decisions like these that um, unfortunately, you know, it, it does it does hurt to, you know, not be able to see everybody again. But um, like Rudy was saying, like, hopefully we could for next year. But, yeah. you know, it's like no promises. But yeah, there there is a lot of planning in what we do. So um yeah, I hope you guys do understand that. Yeah, I mean, that's what I wanted to talk about next. Like, we travel a lot for events. We, to set it up, we have, uh, fortunately, we have very good, we have great retailers and distributors that help us with the arrangements of location planning. This is especially for the international office in Singapore because, you know, that's a different country. It's a different way of handling things and we're not very familiar with it. Our distributors have us secure the locations up to about four to five months in advance before the event actually happens. And then the PR cards, they are printed probably easily about five, six months in advance as well. Yeah, we'd have to plan for them about yeah. that time there. Yeah. The quantities have to be yeah. decided upon way before that, way before we decide to print. So practically after we're done with PCS, we probably... Uh, after World Finals, we are already planning BCS. Yeah, we we would already be needy. Right. Know, BSF, after yeah. BSF is done, we we will start BC. We would have a month where we will start planning for B the next BCF for the following year, and then we'll be running BCS at the same time while continuing to yeah. prepare for BSF. And yeah, I would, I would definitely say like earlier, maybe. Yeah. Like even like sometimes like yeah, it's like sometimes it's like mid circuit. We start. <laughs> we have to, depending on like you know different like just approving and stuff like that, you know, getting things out. Yeah, and I think while it is tiring for us to run the event, at the end of the day, it's super rewarding because a lot of people come in happy, they're playing the games, there's a lot of shouting and not a bad kind of shouting, you know, good shouting, especially, you know, when you get a trigger or 
cancel at a, a crucial moment and stuff like that it really brings a lot of joy for us so again shout out to the players we miss you guys we wish we could have events we wish we could travel to those events yeah but yeah. hopefully things will get back to normal and you know we won't have to not say we wouldn't have to host BRF because we, we like BRF as well. We get to see interactions. I think the most warming thing about uh, BRF interactions is that players from around the world get to play with each other at any point in time. You can be up at 3am and not be able to sleep and you can play against someone who's halfway across the world where it's like 6pm for them or, or even you know early morning for them. Yeah, I love that. We will continue that. But I think nothing beats face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. So hopefully we can get some safety measures in place. We are looking into acrylic uh, sheets, but yeah. we are not sure about the how how that will go and how we can provide the whole world for that because <laughs> we have a lot of players worldwide and a lot of events. But we are looking into things like this to figure out how we can improve the situation on our own, and while waiting for the situation to improve itself, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, so. Now I'd like to talk about something interesting so we know uh, maybe the players get to know us a bit better. So we all play card games. Mm. What kind of decks do we play? Matthew, you wanna take this first because I suspect yours will be the longest answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I don't think so, but spoiler alert, Matthew's choices are annoying. <laughs> um, <laughs> it depends it depends on, on which end of it you're sitting. So like if you're on the dishing out end, of course you're having fun. Like if but if you're on the receiving end, uh, that's a different story altogether. So <laughs> let's me, go game by game. Game, <laughs> by, game, game by game. Let's go game by game. What game do you wanna start with? Um I, I think let's talk about Vanguard maybe. Let's talk about Vanguard okay. standard. So um players will know that the Vanguard standard meta game is, is very aggressive. I'm I'm not an aggressive player. I don't like to play like aggro decks that go really really fast. I kind of like like um, the weirder, slower control based decks, which don't really don't really do very well in this kind of meta game in this kind of uh, game. But um, so one of my favorite decks um right now is the Nubatama deck so that basically burns out the opponent's entire hand size and then chips them to death. It's like killing your opponent with a spoon, you know? You're like, you're still just tapping them slowly until, you know, eventually they That's give up the and they're like, stop! Stop it! Yeah. Killing somebody with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, now you know why I say bad choices are annoying. I love control. <laughs> oh my god, the two of you, I hate it. I love it. I love it. I, mean, I like years ago. All of it. <laughs> really? It's a it's so stress like it's stressful to play them, but at the same time, like I like I feed off of that stress. Yeah, it's it's kind of rewarding, you know, like when you when you finally manage to stabilize and like you're like okay, I I reach equilibrium, so this is where I'm gonna slowly tip it over into my side. I'm just gonna slowly yeah. do this, be very very safe, and then you you never invest all your resources in one go. You're just like okay, I'm just gonna play really safe. Let's play this one thing, and then I'll hit him one damage, and then I'll stop. And then <laughs> I'll wait for him to see if there's anything else he can do. If there's nothing else, okay, I'll hit another time with the spoon and then hopefully he doesn't have anything else again. <laughs> hit him with the spoon! <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we just found our new uh, Bushio podcast tagline. Hit him with, hit the, him spoon. with the spoon! Dude. <laughs> hit him with the spoon! <laughs> so when you guys uh, enter any events in the future, you can just... Start with hit him with the spoon. <laughs> Stand up the hit him with the spoon. <laughs> Using control decks. Yeah. Oh my god, he's hitting me with a spoon. It's a way to describe playing against a control deck player. Yeah. <laughs> Slowly amazing. chipping you away. Like he's hitting me with a spoon. Oh my god. <laughs> what about Weiss? Like how? What do you, for Weiss? Um. So Weiss doesn't really have uh, something similar to that, but I think Weiss. I I tend to like the decks that have like more control, like. I think having a lot of deck control is very important for Vice. And my favorite deck right now is able to do that a lot. It's a Goblin Slayer. So it's, it's a, there's a lot of deck manipulation, there's a lot of deck search, um, there's a lot of events, there's a lot of ways to do different things that you can, you have a lot of different tools to deal with different situations. And it's, it's just that versatility that's really, really interesting for me. Like it's not the aggression for me. Like I like, because a lot of the, the top end for my deck is like, a, are like walls. They have very high power walls that don't really let their opponent hit through. So they like you know all those on reverse effects don't go off. 
Um, they also have ways yeah. to stop the opponent from from your aggression, stop like incoming damage, the heal damage. There's so many things you can do with the deck. So like honestly, that's that's really fun for me. Hmm. I am like your exact <laughs> opposite. I get very patient when the game takes too long. Within five turns, if the game is not over and I haven't won or I haven't <laughs> lost, I'm scooping. I'm out. Every single card he game. Did not I, like spoons. I, I hate control, man. I'm sorry. I, I think I just Maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand. <laughs> now hold up, hold up, hold up. So, so that's, that's that's a misconception, right? Like aggro players are not not dumb people, you know. It's no, not, no, no, no. <laughs> I, not, I did not say aggro people are dumb players. Okay? It's just that I don't have the patience to try and tip the game in my favor, so that you know, I I don't aim for equilibrium. I aim to go in and destroy my opponent. I don't aim to win. You know, I'm gonna. I'm not going to beat him down with a spoon, man. I'm going to come in with a hammer. <laughs> like, no way I'm going to take a spoon, you know? I'm not a... Like a rocket launcher, you mean? Yeah, I don't spoon, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just full rocket launcher. <laughs> You're like, I'm out of ammo. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my boss been what? Okay, I'm out. Next game. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Every single game. Uh, what about the uh, buddy fight at all, or? Oh, um, oh, buddy fight for me it was Dungeon World. Ah. Uh, Back then, actually, I haven't played buddy fight or played. I think the last time I played buddy fight was in two thousand seventeen, sixteen, somewhere around there. And I remember playing a Dungeon World deck because it was OTK. Uh, I think it was the mm-hmm. adventurer. Yeah, adventure. Link attack. Yes, link attack. Deal damage then to your double, face. Double attack. Right, right, right. Deal damage. Then after that, equip weapon uh, for like four crits. Super crit, aggro. Something like that. Super, super, super aggro. Like, I remember being at an event and I feel really bad for this. It was, there was a queue of people because we were having a gunslinger event. So I was playing against like, people who were out of the tournament. There were like, I think the queue was like five to like eight people. And that's pretty long when you're waiting for a game to end, in, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You're kind of waiting like 15 to 20 minutes per person. Mm-hmm. And I remember I, this guy queuing, and he was at the back of the line. He was using his phone all the way. Finally got to his turn, and he sat down, and he started first. And then it was my turn, and then I won. Oh. <laughs> and oh. then, you know, <laughs> ouch. we were supposed... We were only allowed to play uh, one match at a time, so he had to queue all over again. <laughs> and unfortunately, it happened again. <laughs> oh. Actually, Rudy, you would mm-hmm. thoroughly enjoy um, superhero right now, um, Gem Clone, because like I, I actually picked up the deck um, not like like fairly fairly recently, and um, the the deck is honestly it's it's very um, it's very aggressive. Like you go into um, impact transformation. The card allows you to impact transformation twice. Um, so then you go uh, into another. Right, you go right, into right. another, and like you know, your impact mm-hmm. transforms are basically like it's kind of like an equip item to your flag. Um, and then you go into well, like, that... your. It's like an equip item to your flag in a way. So like essentially, this whole deck works all in final phase. Like you skip your main phase, you skip your battle phase, you legitimately go into final phase, and you do all your attacks and you do all your moves, like spells, everything. And so can your opponent react? Uh, no, most of the time they can't because you have so many like spell like you have you have a card that legitimately says you cannot nullify my cards you cannot uh, <laughs> rest my cards. Um, there's a card that pulls a card out of your because you can only impact summon once. So uh, not impact transform but impact summon. Um, so well impact transform yeah it's one but the card allows you to do it twice. But anyways. So there's like a card that pulls out cards from your hand, free cost. There's cards that pull out from the drop zone, like free cost. Um, there's legitimately a card, it's Gao, and his ability is every time he destroys something, he stands back up. And oh, right. then Gao, if there's Gao, no Gao. <laughs> Yeah. If there's no it's Sonic Buster. So like if he ha- if there's no cards uh, like on your opponent's field, he gets three critical, so he's at six. So then like um and then... Wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on. Let me stop you right there, man. <laughs> Don't you start with 10 health in Buddy Fight? Yeah, but the whole point this is... Is this 6 health like 60%? <laughs> yeah. Forgive if my math sucks, but... Dude, I'm not... I was like, the thing is, the, the funny part is, like, there's a card that you drop... You, you drop one hand card. And uh, 
Uh, I'd have to like read it verbatim, but um, but the whole goal is like essentially you can stand suit two superheroes or rest two cards. I mean rest rest or stand any card, um, but it's two of them. So essentially you just keep like link attacking and going to into these guys. Um, you have like gem clone who can has triple attack. Triple. Uh, the the <laughs> gem clone is the guy who gives you the double impact. So like within your like first turn you can hit somebody for like eight damage. Like if you go first, you can hit them for like eight, and then just that's their turn. Because there's like a there's a whole combo. Like you can beat them right then and there if you have the sure. full full combo. But you legitimately like you can hit them for eight damage in that one turn, and then once they get to their like attack phase and final phase, you just start doing all this other stuff on your on their turn, and then it's your turn again, and you 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 win. At that point, you win. If they can't beat you right there, you win. Well, we know what I'm gonna do after the podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start looking through the office for. These gem code decks. Now that yeah, like the the, Matt, the downside. But I can see Matt oh, good. brain from here. You know, I can hear it from here. He's already thinking of like what he's going to build to counter this deck. <laughs> oh, the the like one Looking of the hardest. his face right now. Oh. Hard counter is that like you know um the deck doesn't build as it doesn't build gauge as fast. It does allow you to draw, um, but it doesn't build gauge as fast as you would need it to. So you kind of like because you're trying to beat your opponent fairly fast um if it if it gets dragged out like there's whatever for whatever re- reason it gets pulled out um it does actually start losing steam so that is like it, it essentially plays the way that you'd like it to play like if i don't get right. like if i get to five turns and we're still going there's a problem so like the deck like i'm not <laughs> saying the deck cannot like you know buddy five players out there don't you know you know <laughs> hate for hate on me for this but it's like i'm not saying the deck can't win outside of that it's just more of the deck is like like I had like I had like a whole sit down and trying to like figure out like this this deck and like um like basically like figure out like all the combos and different things and it's just like wow this thing's like highly aggressive um it is utility and it's just like yeah so I uh, honestly I, I could see you wanting to play this. <laughs> I'm gonna take a look at this deck. I'll give you my Later build. <laughs> I'll give you my build. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, for me normally like so like for vanguard um i initially used to play like pure like i used to play like pure royal paladin um but like now for standard um i'm I'm very much more drawn to like decks that have utility like i need to have resources and like i, I need to be able to like build those resources and then basically do my plays so like i play spike brothers like some people will say like well i mean that's not really resource heavy but i'm like yeah i mean it is like if you have if you get as like pulling the cards that you need out of the deck and pulling the things that you need to to essentially like you need to count and you need to know what's going to come out next what's which what, what your next future moves are going to be so that you can assess and attack every situation um and as like I love Shadow Palom and unfortunately to me it's like there are re- there's there are resources but there's it's kind of the same uh I'd say core build for those resources mm-hmm. so it's like you know um I was like with Spike Brothers, you know, we're we're still waiting, like what's going on with them. So they might have like different resources moving forward with their other combos. But it's like Shadow Paladin kind of has the same thing going. So I like them, but um, not really as much as I like like Spike Brothers, Great Nature. Um, I really like. I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, I like Narukami right now. Like a lot of people will hate me for that, but it's like I like where Vanquisher oh. is at, just because like you know you keep you you keep ripping cards with drawing. But I just I do like. I do like a lot of uh, resources is when I like, I like to be able to get out of any situation. Yeah, I, ju- I just got smashed by a Narukami player over the weekend. Uh, he, he drew four Chaturas and then he just completely wrecked me. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a deck that's so aggressive, it has actually a pretty ridiculous amount of draw power. So yeah, yeah, that deck is very, it's, it's really scary. It's weird because it's like, so if you can, in all honesty, if you can like hit it pretty hard, like you play aggressive against their aggressive, you you sure can get through them. It's just that like once they get to that like once they get to that really comfortable spot, um, that like you know just kind of starting with ride three, like just going into grade three, you know, like that's that's a comfortable spot for them. If you can start rushing them right. early, um, you're you're decently okay. But again, you'd have to be super aggro against them where they like you know it doesn't matter how many cards you got you know they pull because those cards were supposed to be their resources to do what they needed to do um that's the only thing like i'm like i'm looking more and more into a deck that just gives me all the utility i need like i like hitting really hard but i do want utility but 
yeah, if you can, like, you know, honestly, if the, like, it's, it, the weird, the deck is weird. If you can hit it really hard, really fast in the beginning, you're good. Um, but if you drag it out, like, super far out, and, like, you're not, like, and you're able to keep building resources, the deck the, will fizzle out after a while. Sounds like it has my name written in as well. I think you like it. I, honestly, <laughs> pretty much. It's, yeah. uh, it's still, you, you still got to build stuff up, but um, you probably like that as well. Um, yeah, it sounds quite mid rangey, not too aggro. A good balance between mid range and aggro. You have your toolbox, which you can use to maintain a bit of equilibrium throughout the game before you start hammering through. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I was like, that's why you know it's it's pretty consistent. So that I I see why it's like it's really high up there for the meta. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's consistent. So I mean, like, um, like I said, the those the two problems that I've listed are like, I would say, yeah, again, like if you're more aggressive than it and you can get like, then you're pretty much you're good. Um, and then if you can drag it out, then the the deck loses its resources fairly quick. At like at a certain point, like it'll just lose them. So uh. It's okay. essentially like that. As soon as they get into like that range where they're comfortable, then like most of the, most of the time the deck's just gonna steamroll you. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I, know, I know I talked a lot. <laughs> uh, buddy fight. No man, no, no, no. I think it's good, man. <laughs> I mean, because I've been kind of out of touch with the games for a while. I haven't really been playing as many card games as I like. I mean, as I mentioned, a lot of World of Warcraft and Dota. <laughs> yeah. Me. Uh, it's good for me to understand what's what now, and I have a uh, what did you say? I have a idea of what I want to play, so I definitely look through the office, and then when you know things start getting better and going to events, I can start gunslinging again. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fun. That'd be dope. I like it. <laughs> oh man. Okay, guys. So I think we've come to the end of the podcast. We sincerely hope Oof. that everyone who's tuned in has enjoyed it. Um, any last words from any of you? Uh, hit him with a spoon. Yeah, hit him with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> that's really. I was like, remember to keep hitting him with a spoon. <laughs> I really hope that goes somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> hit him with a spoon. Maybe if we repeat it enough times, there. Yeah, we're gonna start every podcast yeah. now with hit him every with a spoon. Podcast then... is gonna be welcome to the Bushro Podcast. Hitting him with a spoon. <laughs> just start screaming in the background. Hit him with a spoon. Just I don't know where it is. <laughs> Tony, like I'm, I'm so I'm, yeah. My my final comment is, don't just hit him with the spoon. Teach him with the spoon. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, now we're going a bit too far, Christian. Calm down. <laughs> Hold down. What I'm trying to take a step back. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you know control decks. <laughs> just hit him with a spoon, man. All right. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> Not even sorry about this up. I think it's I think it's great. He needs to catch on. <laughs> All right. So we come to the end of the podcast, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're gonna do four more episodes of this for uh, the summer fest. I think we are posting this on YouTube and Facebook, so we are open to suggestions and comments and hopefully constructive criticism. I have feelings. They're very soft and sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we both cried on the plane, but so I mean, like, I'm pretty sure they already know. <laughs> Yo, I thought they were going to forget about that already. Don't bring it up. Yeah. I'm trying to. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you very much. We hope to see your comments below. Let us know how we can improve. Um, let us know if you like it as well. I mean, this is something we're doing for Summerfest, but it could be something we could continue doing, maybe bi-weekly or monthly. But yeah, let us know in the comments below. And, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank so you. this is Christian, Matt and Rudy. Tuning out from the Bushiro Podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.